Hello, welcome to my channel, and today we'll discuss how you can use Canon's HDR PQ and C-Log3 as a bonus, video clips as is or with minimal editing, and prepare them for upload to YouTube either in SDR or HDR. I'll also discuss how to render them to be usable as such using either Apple iMovie or Vegas Pro video editing software. As always, check the chapter bar or description for timestamps if you want to jump right into a particular subject. If you don't know how to film in HDRPQ or are properly exposed for it, I'd advise looking up one of the many excellent free guides here on YouTube first. This video presumes you already have an HDRPQ clip that looks good to you when played back on your camera. It also is recommended that you have a screen available capable of displaying HDR content. Most modern smartphones can, by the way. Though if you don't, you could still partially benefit from this video. Canon's HDRPQ is a feature that provides certain Canon cameras with a way to shoot high dynamic range, or HDR, photos and videos. The exact technicalities behind HDR are complex and confusing, at least to me, and I would suggest looking up other videos if you really want to know more on the specifics. But for this video, suffice to say that HDR provides a wider range of colors and light than traditional standard dynamic range, also known as SDR, sRGB, or Rec. 709. What does this mean in practice? High contrast scenes, such as backlit objects or harsh noon sunlight, will have more details in the highlights and shadows when shot in HDR, and the transition between the two will be smoother as well. Do note, however, that Canon's Highlight Tone Priority feature, required for HDRPQ but also available for SDR, will also help retain details in the highlights to a lesser extent in SDR footage, as seen here. Except for the R100, all of Canon's R series cameras, starting with the R5 and newer, are capable of filming in HDRPQ. It is most important, however, for the R50 and R10, both of which lack any other high dynamic range video recording options like C-Log. Even those with C-Log capable bodies may want to consider using HDRPQ for certain situations, as it is meant to be used as is and can save you from time consuming color grading. There are many YouTube guides out there on how to process HDRPQ video, However, almost all I've seen treat it as a flat profile to be color graded in editing. That's great, of course, if you want creative control over your colors, but let's see just how much we can skip the color wheels and bars and get our footage out there. Let's start with the simplest method, just uploading a raw clip. Once you've got an HDRPQ clip downloaded on your device of choice, whether it be from the EOS utility, Canon Connect app or SD card reader, just log into your YouTube account or app and use the create button to upload your clip. Firefox users be warned, this browser does not currently support HDR playback in YouTube, so you will need to temporarily use another browser if you want to see it in its full glory. And of course, don't forget to activate your screen's HDR mode before viewing. It may take a while for YouTube to process the HDR aspect of your video, and sometimes it just never goes through and will need to be re-uploaded. But once it does, you'll probably be pleased with just how good it looks. For those with C-Log3 capable cameras, a straight upload will only result in a washed out clip, since as mentioned before, this is a profile meant to be color graded. Individual bare clips might be fine for some subjects, but what if we want to do more with them? YouTube Studio has a few tools, but if we want to aggregate clips, add text, and the like, we'll need something else. If you own an Apple iPhone, iPad, or MacBook, you'll have access to the free iMovie software, which, though rudimentary, can process HDRPQ clips. Though be warned, pre-rendering playback may be choppy on older MacBooks. The iPhone and iPad versions can export the edited project in HDR, and the latest version of Canon Connect can actually transfer HDRPQ clips 
directly from your camera to your device, though unfortunately compression is not available. For whatever reason, iMovie on MacBook does not support exporting in HDR. However, you can still export them as SDR and they retain some extra detail in the shadows and highlights. On MacBooks able to run it, the free version of the popular video editor DaVinci Resolve can apparently handle HDRPQ and CLOG3 Canon files, but the Windows version cannot, though the free tool Shutter Encoder can apparently be used as a workaround. I don't have any experience with this method though, so you may want to search for other guides if you choose this method. Vegas Pro isn't nearly as popular as DaVinci Resolve, but it too can handle the HDRPQ and C-Log files from Canon, with some adjustments. I have Vegas Pro 19 here, but I've also tested the latest version, 22, through the free trial as well, just to see how things differed. And they didn't much, aside from some SDR rendering quirks, which we'll get into later. Before we open Vegas, head over to Canon's official site, and look for the support page for the R5 or R5 II, it doesn't matter which. Under the download section and software and drivers subsection, look for Canon lookup table version 2019-11 and download that. Extract it somewhere you can find the folder contents easily and keep that location in mind for later. Now let's load up Vegas and start simple with a single unedited HDR PQ clip in your timeline. Go to Properties under File and prepare to make your first major decision. Are you editing in standard 8-bit video or going for high dynamic range 10-bit video? YouTube can accept either and display HDR videos in SDR for watchers without capable screens but beware that they take longer to render and YouTube can take days to weeks to finally process HDR mode and sometimes fails to do so at all. Let's start with rendering in SDR. In project properties, make sure HDR mode is off and pixel format is not 32-bit full. You'll notice the previewed clip is washed out, so head back to the timeline, make sure your clip is selected and highlighted in yellow, and activate the color grading panel and go straight to input LUTs. Select browse for camera loot and find the folder that you extracted from the file you downloaded from Canon earlier. Diving into subfolders, find 3D loot, then choose 33 grid or 65 if your computer is decently powerful. Continue into full to full and finally search through the cube files and find the relevant BT2020 Canon Log 2 to BT709 YDR. Take note of the C-Log variants here too, but for now we'll select the BT2020 file, and that's it. The HDR PQ file looks great, and you can also add SDR clips to the mix, or add C-Log clips, which you can get a head start on color grading with the relevant LUTs we saw earlier. Rendering in SDR was easy, but what about HDR? If you haven't activated your screen's HDR mode yet, exit Vegas Pro and do so. Reload Vegas and put the same unedited clip in your timeline and open Project Properties. This time, we'll set HDR mode to HDR10 and leave Pixel Format, Gamma, Aces Color, Space, and View Transform at their defaults. If your clip had a loot activated under the color grading panel, Remove that, as we won't be using them here. The previewed clip will look gray and washed out again, but up in the preview, click on the HDR button and admire how beautiful your clip has become. The HDR button may be grayed out if you did not load Vegas Pro while your screen's HDR was on. If you've added white text to your project, you may find it to be on the gray side. To fix this, simply max out the contrast. If you're using nothing but HDR PQ clips here, you can move on to the rendering section. But if you want to also add SDR or C-Log3 clips to your project, things will get a little more involved here. If you're in Vegas Pro 22 and probably some other versions higher than 19, right click on your SDR clip in the project media space, 
Choose Properties, and under Color Space, select Canon Rec. 709, Daylight or Tungsten to taste. Color range can be full or limited, but I found limited closest. Be warned, you may also need to increase in contrast. Color Spaces sRGB, Rec. 709, and Generic sRGB texture are also similar but darker. Adjust to taste and you're done. If you're in Vegas Pro 19, and perhaps a few other higher versions however, you will find your SDR clips to be abnormally red and oversaturated with most color spaces. Through trial and error, I found the Canon Linear Rec 2020 Daylight or Tungsten color space and limited color range to be the closest to reality, though you still may need to raise contrast and desaturate the red somewhat. Again, make sure the HDR preview button is on before making color corrections. For C-Log 3, ignore the loots this time and go straight into the clip properties. Change the color space to your relevant C-Log 3 variant and enjoy! Once again, color range limited will be more contrasty. Now we're ready to render in HDR. Select a HDR 10 template relevant for your GPU from the one of the formats. I normally use Magic Hev C ACC MP4, but AVC works as well. And it may also work the same with Apple ProRes, but I have not tested this as the files are absolutely gargantuan. Click Customize for your chosen HDR10 template, and under the Projects tab, note the color range YCBCR output. If you want a little more contrast, you can leave it at Limited or if not, set it to full. Once your project is rendered, look it over to see that you're satisfied with the colors, and let's upload to YouTube. As mentioned earlier, Firefox does not support HDR playback in YouTube, and you may want to upload using another browser too, just in case. YouTube will probably process HDR and short videos quickly, and you can expect to view them as such within 10 minutes or so, but longer clips may take hours or days. When it's ready and your screen's HDR mode is on, the gear symbol on your YouTube video will have an HDR icon on it, and your video's colors will be much brighter and more vibrant. If you right-click on the video and view the Stats for Nerds, the color should be SMPTE 2084 PQ slash BT2020. If it is, congratulations, you have succeeded. I hope you found this video useful, whether you're a frustrated Vegas Pro user or a new camera owner wondering what to do with those fancy video modes you hear people gushing about. This video took a long time and a lot of work to make, involving a lot of research and trial and error on my part, so if you were able to learn something from this, please consider liking, comment, and or subscribing.